Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. Inspiration can come from anywhere. Love, nature, travel, or in this case, donuts. Donuts are one of the worst things on this planet to eat, but there's no denying their beauty and delicious colorfulness. In today's video, we'll paint a textured stone with a thick pink paint glaze and dot some rainbow sprinkles on top. We'll cover how to thicken and thin paint, how to use flat silicone tools to create straight lines, and how to use colored chalk, dry brush techniques, and a makeup sponge to make that donut side look real. Feel free to use whatever frosting or sprinkle colors you'd like. Here's an example of a donut inspired rock that's made from chocolate glaze. So it's just a different look, but it's the same kind of thing. So go grab your paints and your tools and a rock that is textured and meet me back here and we'll get started. So for this project, you'll need a few dotting rods, just the smaller sizes, and I'm gonna use silicone tools. And you need silicone tools for the straight sprinkles. And uh, here's one side. We're gonna use the flat and the pointed silicone tops for this one. And then if you flip it over on the other side are all of your stylus tools and those are going to give you all the dots. So these are what the tools you need and then these are the paints that I chose but you can pick whatever colors just make sure that they're sprinkle colors. All the paint colors that I used in this video will be listed down below. I'm using DecoArt Americana for the paints and now I'm going to start with the bottom of the donut. So here we're trying to uh, make a, just a plain donut bottom. And I'm using a makeup sponge to apply it, but you can use a paintbrush. And now I'm using two different colors of paint and just kind of mixing, you know, like a beige pastry donut color, just mixing it um, on the surface. Now I'm gonna use my art use only toothbrush and I'm going to apply a little bit of tan or brownish paint and you can just kind of blot the brush onto the rock and it gives it a little bit of texture. And it's okay if it's not even because once the paint is applied you get your makeup sponge and you just kind of blot it just like that. And it gives it a little bit of a texture. Now I'm using Folk Art Baby Pink and Arteza Pink. The Folk Art is a medium body and the Arteza is a heavy body paint. So uh, what I need is a thick paint. I'm actually going for a frosting look. I want it to be thick, so I'm gonna add some golden gel gloss. And this is just going to bulk up uh, my paint so that it has a not fully heavy body, but somewhere like medium, medium body paint. Because what happens is when you put a thin body paint on the side of a rock, it's the gravity is going to pull it down and it's going to droop. And you really want something that's going to stand up and be frosting like along the edge. Now I'm using an applicator bottle with a really wide gauge tip to apply this thick paint. Um, but you can use a handmade cone. Um, I like the applicator bottles because you can mix right in the bottle. You can store your paint forever. And it just gives you a lot of um, options as far as how to uh, adjust the paint once it's on the surface, which I like. So now we're just going to squirt some paint along the edge. And it's... You want to kind of make it so that it looks like it's drippy. You don't want it to be perfectly straight and you don't want your drips to be like exactly, you know, 
exactly perfect. You want to try and get as much variation in there as possible. I noticed with my first stone, when I did the drips, they were just evenly spaced and, you know, just kind of, that's not how things drip. You want it to be, you want to have fat drips and then skinny drips and then a big wide drip and you want variation because that's kind of how, how that would go in real life. Now, some of you I have already lost with this whole frosting bit. And if you don't care at all about whether or not your frosting is thick like frosting, you can absolutely just paint a pink base coat. Just paint it flat. It doesn't have to have texture. Um, but now what I've done is I've taken some of that frosting because it's a little too thick. It would actually dry with those, those, um, that texture that it had. So I added a little bit of pouring medium. And what that does is it smooths it out. And see how it self levels? You can just pile it on there and it will start to remove all of the little indentions where your palette knife was. And it'll smooth itself out. And then overnight it dried. And that is decent. I will take it. I think that's cool. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're just going to put dots on top of it anyway, right? So now I'm going to show you another technique for the bottom. I'm taking a brush, and I think that's a hog's hair brush, but it's a really stiff bristle. And then you take some paint and you wipe it off. It's, it's like a dry brush technique. And then you just kind of stipple some uh, light tan on top, and it kind of looks like like powdered sugar. And then I'm going in and I'm grabbing my chalk, which I, obviously I never use. And this sienna brown color kind of makes it look toasted. And this is where we are when we start dotting. I'm not done with that bottom section yet, but uh, I'm pretty pleased with, with how it looked. Totally strange getting the brushes out, but now we're getting the dotting tools out, and this is where the mandala painting begins. So that first dot is right in the center. I used the blue tool. And now let's use the tiniest stylus tip and grab some white paint. And we're going to add some dots around that big center dot. Starting with the bottom, and then vertically go up to the top. And then you'll make like a plus sign on the north, south, east, and west points on that dot. And then we'll just do northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest. And then we're going to fill in the rest of the dots using red paint. So using the same size tool, we'll just add red in all of the spaces in between those white dots. Now we'll use the next stylus ball size up, which is the pink tool, and we'll add red dots. Now when you add these red dots, you'll go to the left of the previous row's red dot. So you always want to place your dot in between the white and red, but to the left of the red dot. And this is going to give you a pinwheel effect. I learned this from Kristen Urich's video. I think she did this, and that's, I learned everything from her. I love her. I love Kristen Urich. She's awesome. And then you switch to the white. And you do the same thing, going to the left of the white dot and in between those red. Now we're going to use the next size up, which is blue. Do the same thing. So grab some red and in between the previous white and red dot, you'll want to go to the left of that red dot. Always on the left of the red dot.
And now using that same blue tool, we're going to add the white dot and always go to the left of the previous white dot, filling in the spaces in between that, those two red dots. And now for the next size up, I'm going to switch to one of my rods, one of the smaller clear rods, and we're gonna add a yellow dot. And this time, we're gonna to go to the left of the previous red dot, still in between the white and red dots, and do that all the way around. And now we'll add some of that royal fuchsia in between the yellow dots. This time going to the left of the white dot. And now using the next rod size up, we're going to add a green dot in between the yellow and pink dots from the previous row. And what you wanna do is just make sure that it lines up with right with the center of those previous two dots. And in this case, it's to the left of the pink dot. So now we're gonna to switch to the pointed silicone tool and it's the blue one. And now we're going to add tiny white dots around each of those green dots. So why use a pointed silicone tool rather than a stylus tool? Well, it's whatever you prefer. I like pointed silicone tools because they, the dot sizes can stay relatively the same size. Where if you're using a stylus tool, often, the, well not often, every single time, the dots will get smaller as you extend the dot line out. So these all stay relatively the same size and that's what I'm going for here. So now we're gonna to switch to the flat silicone tool, that's the yellow tool, and we're gonna make some straight sprinkles. So in order to do this, you just take a little tiny amount of paint on the very tip of your tool. You don't wanna get a huge glob or you'll get kind of an oval shape. You want just a little bit of paint on the tip of your tool and then you can make little lines. And that's what we're going for because you know they have those flat like rod shaped sprinkles, that's what we're going for. So I want you to put a red sprinkle right in between the green dots. We're gonna do that all the way around. Now let's add some blue sprinkles. We're gonna do one on either side of the red ones. And now with a small rod, let's just add a dot underneath those straight sprinkles. And now back to the pointed silicone tool, we're gonna to add some yellow dots around where the white ones are.
Now let's take some of that fuchsia and surround the red dots. And now we're back to the flat sprinkles and this time we're going to use white and just add one white flat sprinkle directly under each of those green sections. So it's like in between the red dots. Now let's add a yellow sprinkle on either side. And now add pink on either side of those yellow flat sprinkles. And now to finish off that section, we're just gonna add red sprinkles on the outside edge of those pink ones. Now we'll add a big blue dot underneath each one of those big red dots. We'll do that all the way around. And now with our pointed silicone tool, let's surround those blue dots with green dots, little tiny ones. I think this is a really fun project for kids. If you have a hard time painting with your kid, just paint something that is like pretend sweet and they'll be all over it. My daughter is like, oh my gosh, I wanna make another one. Let's make a cake one. Let's make a cookie one. Let's do this. She's not this interested usually. We don't have sugar in the house, so <laughs> it's, it's kind of sad, but uh, this is how she gets her sugar tooth, her sweet tooth in. All right, so now we're gonna get loose and we're gonna add some just kind of chaotic random sprinkles along the edges. And so you'll take your flat silicone tool and just angle it different angles to get it so that it looks really random like a real donut would be and leave some space in between the red because then we're gonna go in with other colors like in this case blue and then um, add some blue to that red. So now you can intersperse some little dot sprinkles with different colors in that little random section down at the bottom. So now all the paint has dried, so now it's time to add top dots. So the center I felt looked nice with a, a big red cherry center. And now I'm just adding some white and um, we're just gonna add top dots in whatever colors we think look nice.
because I can't do anything without adding some gold, I'm just going to add one dot of gold in the middle. There it is. All right. Now we're going to add a toasty glaze to the bottom of our donut. So take some sienna brown chalk and with your toothbrush just scrape off some of that chalk powder into your palette. And now add some Liquitex matte varnish. Matte's important because you want the donut to have no gloss at all because it's like bread. So we're just going to mix it up, get all of the pigment mixed in your matte varnish and then Watch this. So you just want to apply that matte varnish just to the bottom of your rock, just where the bread part of your donut shows up. And this is just going to make it look nice and brown and toasty. So here's how it looks when it's dry and now we're going to add a high gloss shine to the frosting because that is a strawberry glaze donut and the glaze is always super shiny so the top is going to get a high gloss varnish. So you just apply it to where the frosting bits are. So was that fun or what? I totally loved this project and you can see I'm still stuck in the sprinkle donut theme collection. Here's a little sneak peek for next week's project. It's the fudge sprinkle waffle cone egg oh, with a cherry on top. Ooh. So in that project we're going to use all the same tools relying heavily on our flat silicone tool which will give us that awesome waffle cone pattern on the bottom. And we're gonna use that applicator bottle to get that big plump cherry on the top. Oh, it's so fun. You guys are gonna love it. And it's a quick one to work up because it's just a tiny little egg. So hey, did you guys like this video? I hope you did. And if you did, please show some love and hit that like button and subscribe to my channel because you do not want to miss that egg. It's going to be super fun next week. And as always, you can meet me over at the Dotting Center if you need any dotting tools, supplies, stencils, or projects. So until next time, guys. Bye.